Well, good evening, y'all, and welcome back to Apron Strings. I'm glad that every one of you is watching, and I thank every one of you that has subscribed. The channel is growing. won't be long. I'll have 2,000 subscribers. So if you don't mind, share my channel with your friends on your, uh, uh, your media, whether it's Instagram or your Facebook page or whatever. I would appreciate if you would share the videos and let some people that I can't reach find out about the channel. And please hit the subscribe button. And if you want to know when I upload a video, touch the little bell and it'll notify you when there's a video. Normally I do Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. But if something should happen and a Saturday moves to a Sunday, then you would be notified. Thank you so much for watching. I'm enjoying this and I'm enjoying having new subscribers and I love your comments and the interaction with you on email and on the comments. And I just feel blessed because I'm getting to have fun doing something I absolutely love to do and that's cook and share. Today's video is not going to be a real long one, but sometimes, you know, you have a picnic or you have a little baby shower, a wedding shower, a special birthday that you want to make a little something extra for, maybe for one of your own immediate family and and you thought you'd fix a little something extra tonight just because they finished one of their classes or they made a hundred or whatever your reason is. We're going to make a dip that I got from a friend of mine, Pam Bounds. I went to her daughter's wedding shower. They served it there and oh my goodness. It's delicious. It's simple. It doesn't take but three ingredients besides the fruit that you use to dip it with. And that's eight ounces of cream cheese, a half a cup of brown sugar, and a half a bag of Heath Brickle Chips. So I'm going to bring you over here and let you watch me stir it up. And then I'm going to use my little apple core wedger and I'm going to make some apple wedges and I'm going to get it on my little serving uh, vessel and I'll show y'all what it looks like and then I'm going to get a bite of it. It's rich and it's so very yummy. So y'all come on over here and learn something new that you can have for the summer or for whatever party time arises. Get on over here. My microwave has a soften setting so I put my eight ounces of cream cheese in there to soften it and uh, I may end up having to get the mixer, but I think because it's soft enough, see it's pretty pretty spreadable, that I can go ahead and just add my brown sugar to it and stir it and get it uh, mixed up well enough that, uh, y'all, I just love to smell brown sugar. And even better than smelling it is tasting it in something, don't you think? So we're going to get this mixed up. Get the brickles in it. If y'all have never had it, you really need to try it. It's, uh, it keeps in the refrigerator for a long time, if it lasts that long. And uh, it's good on apples or strawberries. That's what I've served it with, is apples and strawberries. And we like it on either one. Okay, it's just about, see I've got it, it just turns it a pretty khaki color. And then I'm just going to guesstimate, and I'm just going to kind of add half of a bag of these. You could add more if you wanted it, but trust me, that's plenty. I think the original recipe might have said a bag, but that's too much. That's all there is to it. You just mix those ingredients together, stir it up real good, and get it in your dish and serve it. Let's get, I've washed my apple really well and got all of the chemicals that might be on it off of it. I'm going to put it in this little plate in a minute, but I'm going to get my apple here, cored and ready to use. Now, if I was going to have this out for a long time, but my grandson's here, so it probably won't last long, I would put lemon juice on my apple to keep it from turning. But I'm just going to put my apple in the little dish here. and all this out of the way. And all I'm going to do, this is actually soup and crackers or whatever. I think I ordered this from the Lakeside Collection. But I'm just going to put my dip in here. 
what you could do is you could make, if you wanted to limit your kiddos on how much of it they had, you could make uh, individual little servings like this and tell them that what they get is what they get. But that's all there is to it, and it's a delicious dessert. So let me um, get the camera. I'm going to take a picture for to put on the video, and then I'm going to eat some of it and let y'all see. Be right back. <clears throat> One time when April was little, she loves ketchup on just about anything. She said, you know, I think ketchup would make a piece of wood taste good. Well, that's kind of how I feel about cream cheese. It makes anything delicious. So let me try a piece of this apple with some of this scrumbumptious cream cheese dip on it. It is so yummy. I told y'all I love caramel and I love toffee. That's awesome. I hope y'all will try this. I've never tried putting food coloring in it to change the color. You might could, but you know, you can put an array of kiwi and strawberries and apples or whatever around it. It doesn't matter that it's a khaki color. It is fabulous. So I hope that I don't choke on this apple. Hope y'all will try this and let me know what you think about it. It's really a great recipe. Doesn't take much. It's something you can pretty well keep on hand. I always keep cream cheese on hand. Now, if any of y'all live in the area where there's a Kroger, generally their brand of cream cheese, they'll have a two-pack, and it's $1.79. Now, today it was $1.99, but that's still, you know, 99 cents for eight ounces is a good price. And Kroger cream cheese is very good. So that's something that you can know about. I'm going to talk to you just for a minute about buying a few things while you get them on the shelf. I have total faith that they're going to let the coronavirus come back at some point or it's going to rear its ugly head up and we'll be going through the same thing again. So I hope this has been a lesson to you that haven't had a week or two of food ahead. You know, right now if you go to Costco you can only get three packages of meat. I went today. Y'all need to go and get you some meat in your freezer, whether it's just a little icebox freezer or your deep freeze. Because let me tell you, if we don't have another pandemic, the price of everything's going to increase. If you think it's tough right now trying to make ends meet, wait till the prices double and triple. I see prices already going up. And with, with Smithfield closing down, your pork's going to go up. There's going to be a, a rise in your grocery products. So just a while, you know, a word to the wise. Take advantage of what you can get now. I'm not saying get a bunch of it and let it ruin. Get stuff that's shelf stable that you can put in the freezer and keep. But have you a little bit of stuff ahead where you don't have to be in the crowd. I never had to go be in the crowd. Whining because the shelves were empty and all of that. I've gone to the store periodically, and now I do go and shop for April because she can't be out in the public. Uh, she's vulnerable to whatever she would get around right now because not only is she having chemo, but her white blood cells are low. So they're treating that too. But uh, if I'm there getting something that her family needs, because she's not as well stocked as Mama, um, if I see something I think I might need, I pick it up. I have bought a few things so that I will have stuff to make goodies for Christmas. What if come Christmas you can't get your stuff that you usually use? Just be wise. Pick you up a few things. Uh, stock your pantry. Do it a little bit at a time. Instead of buying one can of pork and beans, buy two. You know, just a little bit. You don't have to go hog wild and spend all your money in one trip. Just buy one or two extras of each and before long you'll have your pantry built up to where you feel a little bit of security. Think about things that you can make that you can stretch. Ground beef, browned, and when you add uh, pinto beans that you've cooked and mashed, that stretches your beef. Um, maybe I know too much Mexican food, I don't know, but there's ways that you can make it go further and when you can't get as much as usual, you still have the same flavor. So, 
I hope y'all pay attention and I hope you'll try to stock your pantry. Always have you some extra alcohol and um, band-aids and maybe some uh, hydro hydrogen peroxide, extra paper towels, things that you might need that you know you take for granted you can run grab it. Get you one and have it on your shelf. I hope y'all listen. I hope you try the dip that I've told you how to make today. Let me tell you, it's going to be a favorite if you do. Everybody that has eaten it absolutely loves it. And when I get a recipe from somebody, I always give them credit for it. And Pam, you've given me several good recipes, but this is one of my favorites. So, y'all need to try. Try the dip. Try it with strawberries. Oh, anyway, I'm going to go and get this uploaded. I've been running all day today. Um, this is Monday. I've been running all day from store to and getting, you know, wear your gloves, wear your mask, wipe down with the Clorox wipes, but I had to get the things that my daughter needed. So I'm kind of tired and I'm, um, I, I'm, that's why I'm doing a quick video. I've got to get in there and get it uploaded because at one o'clock tonight, it's supposed to be ready for y'all. So I'm going to get busy. Let me know what you think about it. The good Lord keep his hand on you and bless you and protect you. And y'all come back here Thursday and we'll have another video.